These things are being crazy fussy. Eat your food, Tina. And she gone. How can you not eat that? Like if they won't eat that, they won't eat anything. There's one on a rip and wrap now. <laughs> After my dead stick gets turned down. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at this rock bass. What? I thought for sure it was like a 14 to 16 inch walleye. Okay. Dang it. Huh. Dude, I got two of them down there right now. One looking at the rip and wrap and one looking at the dead stick. Something is going to happen very soon. Eat. No way. So it's like, I can't talk when there's a fish on my graph. This is not a rock bass. What the heck? They're walleyes. I, I did have one rock bass come through and it was round and stubbier, you could tell. <laughs> I don't know what to do. God dang it. There's another one right now. He's right on my dead stick. Look at my minnow swimming away from the fish. Oh, eat it. No, nope, it didn't like that. They're everywhere, man. If these things were hungry, this would have been the craziest 30 minutes. Oh, another one eyeing her up. Oh, he's right on me. Man, I don't know. And she gone. Oh, I cannot believe that none of those fish ate. Dude, if they were hungry right now, I'd have 10, 12 eyes. And some really nice marks. This one's been looking at my rip and wrap for freaking ever. Oh man. I just, I can't even believe it. And it's like, I have a fat head down there. Should I have a little shiner? But I can't find one. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh no. It's so frustrating. Just another big blob came through. I've tried everything. Unbelievable. I swear this isn't what I'm graphing because I never even saw this thing. What the heck? Man, these things are fussy. I mean, walleyes are always fussy, but the farther you get into winter, the lower the oxygen levels are. It's like, man, if you see eight of them and you get one to even nip at you, you're doing pretty good. So it's one reason I wanted to talk a little bit about my go-to set line. Dead stick, tip up. You can put the same thing on a rattle reel, an iFresh Pro, whatever you are using as your second line. Oh, now one's coming up to the one I'm jigging. I can't think and see a fish on the graph at the same time, so this isn't all going very well. But anyway, my go-to set line or dead stick to double your odds of catching fish. Obviously, if you have two lines down, you double your odds, but I would say you quadruple your odds later in the year when the fish are more subtle and don't want to eat that bait that you're actively jigging and working. I got one sniffing the dead stick right now. Eat it, eat it. That would have been too convenient. There's a lot of fish moving around. It's flash bite time right now, but if I could rig one setup for a set line, it would be a number six VMC glow resin treble hook with either a fat head or a small shiner skin hooked in the back. If they're not gonna eat this, they're not gonna eat anything. Basically, it's as subtle and natural as you can get. And that little glow resin epoxy is just enough of a little something down there. It adds a little color or a little glow, just a little bead focal point. Now there's two different ways that I rig this. If the walleyes are slightly cooperating, a little more aggressive, I'll have that split shot a solid foot above the bait and it's a pivot point. It lets that minnow swim out to the sides and move around more. And when you tail hook a minnow, same thing. They're gonna be able to swim around freely and they'll get momentum to swing that bait out to the sides around the hole. Now, I've been turned down by a half dozen fish on the graph right now, and I can actually see that minnow, when a fish is sniffing it, you'll see my minnow on live scope swim like 12, 15 inches away, and then that fish leaves. It's just not interested in chasing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that pivot point down to probably within six inches of my minnow, which looks crazy close compared to normal. And instead of tail hooking that minnow, I'm going to skin hook it in the back and it's still going to stay alive until a fish eats it. If you just go through the skin and you don't go through anything important. But because it's in the back and not in the tail, it can't swim as far out to the side. So now this minnow, if I had to guess, would have up to about six inches of movement down there, just enough. Anything more than that, and I'm just seeing these fish bugger off. 
Now, I don't care what you put this on, if it's on a tip up or whatever, any set line, they eat it. And if they don't, you're not gonna catch them anyway. <laughs> so as far as sizes go for the VMC Glow Resin Treble, I would say 90% of the time, I'm using a number six. It's the biggest size they make. I like the extra hook gap it has for hooking those shiners and hooking the fish. Uh, I will bump down to a size eight if I'm using fat heads or really small golden shiners, but that six is just kind of that sweet spot for those three inch golden shiners or even a hair bigger. Now what's crazy is a set line or dead stick can be as simple as you want to make it, but there's so many variables that you can really get it complex, which sounds funny for just a, a rod that's sitting there and you're not doing anything with. Now a couple of the other things that I like to do, I guess to make it a little more advanced, if you're hopping around and you have your dead stick set up someplace, adding a little 99 cent bell to it, it doesn't matter what you're doing or what you're focused on, you're gonna hear that thing, the dinner bell ringing off and it's a full on sprint to that dead stick. Got him. Do you need my assistance? Yeah, I do. Might be better than I thought. There he is. Oh, yeah. oh, oh if I could grab him. Oh, solid, man. Nice. Bonus, baby. Dude. Nice, man. And that is why you put down a dead stick. Yes, sir. If you're fishing really close right next to you, just having a dead stick where you can watch that rod go down is nice. Uh, another thing that I like to do, I've been playing with, is this is actually a 10 inch stem on this bobber and it lights up. Now 10 inches seems crazy, right? But when that thing is sitting in the hole, I can be hole hopping around and still see whether that thing is up or going down or if it's bobbing because my minnow is getting active. Pretty dang cool design. And I know a lot of guys use these in permanent fish houses because no matter where you're at in the house, you can see that stem. 20 yards away. Boop. And they also come in two inch versions too if you don't want the outrageous 10 inch. But that 10 inch is really fun for hopping around or even if it's next to you, just to catch your eye going down when you're focused on your jigging stick. So as far as line goes, I almost always use six pound suffix advanced ice mono. And there's a few reasons for that. It's cheap and it works good. It's probably the biggest reason, but monofilament isn't gonna absorb water like a braid would. Braid holds water and if it's a set line and it's just sitting there and you're not using it, it's gonna freeze up and ice up and it's, so frustrating when you finally get that bell to go off, bobber to go down, flag to pop, and you get over there and your line's all frozen up and you can't even reel it in. But that, uh, that ice mono, it shreds water, it's super strong. I use six pound and I swear it's like 10 pound, you know, you can't break the stuff. Just dynamite on a dead stick and same if you're just out hole hopping, six or eight pound, man, to not have it freeze up and still have just a little bit of give, which is nice, but this is supposed to have 50% less stretch than traditional mono. And I, I would never go back to traditional mono because that giant stretch is just so hard to do anything with and get a good hook set, especially when you're jigging a fish up and let's say it bites here and then you're swinging above your head. Now, if you got 12 more inches of line stretch, you're out of the game, so. Later that same evening. That's so cool. Ooh. It's a good one. Ooh. Drag. That's the one I dumped. Oh boy. 
Things are happening. Just one of my hands. Oh. Look at him on the live scope. Of course the GoPro was off, but one just murdered my bobber. Oh, big walleye. <laughs> Take it easy. Man. Oh. Yeah. Why am I nervous, man? <laughs> I think I need to catch more of these. Take that edge off. <laughs> oh. Big walleye. Not to Malax. <laughs> Nice fish, dude! Look at that. <laughs> Holy crap. Where's that glow res in trouble? Oh, she's gone. We gotta cut it. We're just gonna nip the line as you far down as I can reach. Sick! Sticks down, dude. Yeah. That was sick. 